Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this and the associated trousers. This is the 1982 trials version of the Australian Disruptive Pattern Camouflage Uniform DPCU. It's something I've wanted to get my hands on for quite a while and my thanks go out to Steve Cheers in Australia again who's helped me in finding these and sending them over to me. Very kind of you Steve, thank you once again. So the uniform we have here is the trials version of the uniform as I say. You can see it draws quite a few features from the US Tropical Combat Uniform and the same is true of the trousers as well, as we'll see as we're looking at this. So we're going to look at this obviously in some detail, I'll take you through the various features of the design, we'll have a look at the internals and the same is true for the trousers as well. Starting with the jacket we have here, the two breast pockets here, angled pocket flaps, concealed buttons underneath as you can see, and the reverse pleat down the centre there and these are quite heavily bellows as well. You can see we have drain holes here and here. Same is true of this pocket here. It's just a mirror image across the front there. And then we have the lower pockets here, which basically they're square, but they follow the same basic design. Concealed buttons on the pocket flap, symbol, single uh, reverse pleat down the center there, and eyelets in the bottom stitched in eyelets for drainage, as you can see there. So drawing quite heavily from the US tropical combat uniform, as far as the, the pockets on the front are concerned. Concealed button closure down the front as well, as you can see. And all made in this, this disruptive pattern camouflage. Very distinctive Australian camouflage, sometimes referred to uh, with the nickname Jelly Bean for obvious reasons. It's somewhat similar to the uh, camouflage used by the US Marine Corps during the Second World War uh, in its, uh, the layout of the design. That is to say the blobs, the way that the, the design is actually uh, put together. The colours are quite peculiar to Australian issue though and obviously there was also a desert version of this as well and it's very distinctive and actually I really like it as a camouflage pattern. I think it's uh, quite an interesting one. So that's the front of the jacket. We'll start moving this around now and have a look at some of the other features. Looking at the right hand side of the jacket here you can see we have an epaulette up on the shoulder there and then looking down at the cuff here you can see we have two buttons which allow you to adjust this in. So you've got the cuff adjustment fully open there You've got one adjustment in like that, just to narrow the cuff down a little bit, and then one there where you can tighten it right in. And the lack of gusset and so forth here is typical of the last production of US Tropical Combat Uniform. So that adjustment there drawn directly across from that uniform design. I'll just button this in here. So very simple here. You've got a piece of cloth on the back of the sleeve here to give some reinforcement, but otherwise very simple. Looking at the back here, there's not a huge amount more to see but we do have the yoke sewn in over the shoulders there, as you can see. And finally, looking at the right-hand side of the jacket here, we do have an arm pocket, and this derives from the battle dress dressing pocket found on the leg of the trousers through the Australian uh, pixie uh, or twiggy greens, uh, which we used during Vietnam and, of course, afterwards as well. Double pleat down the front there, and this, of course, then has a, a flap. Uh, rather than just having a button closure at the top, it does have a flap with a concealed button we have a single concealed button there, as you can see underneath there. That's the details of the externals of this jacket. We're going to turn this inside out now and have a look at the internal details as well. We now have the jacket turned out to look at the internal details. As you can see at the front here, it's very plain. There's no internal pockets or anything. It's unlined, as you'd expect for a, a uniform primarily designed for wear in hot weather. If we lift this up here, you can see the bottom hem has been stitched over to form a channel for the draw cord. And you can see the end of the elastic draw cord there just runs through this little eyelet actually on the outside face but it's easier to see the channel for the draw cord around the bottom there looking at the inside. If we turn this around to look at the right hand side you can see the details of where the arm pocket is stitched on. You can see the details of the cuff the doubled over there and the, the hem of the cuff as you can see. And looking at the back here you can see we have a double layer of cloth over the shoulders where the, the yoke has been sewn in there as you can see. Otherwise very plain. We do have the label up in the collar however and if I raise this up out of the way we can have a look at this in close up now. Looking at the label you can see here AGCF Victoria which is of course the Australian government clothing factory and the date of 1982 followed by a broad arrow underneath that and then we have size 95 XL and then Bruick shirting and then the army number and name could be written in underneath that. The final thing to look at here of course is the left hand side there's even less to look at here because we obviously don't have any details of the pocket stitched on the arm it's on the other arm only so looking at the left hand side of the internals which of course is the right arm as you wear this we have no further details to look at there really you can just see the details of the construction the shoulder seams and the where the, the sleeve is connected on there 
and obviously the cuff is exactly as we saw on the other side. We'll look at the trousers from this suit now as you can see and we have the single exposed waist button in the center there above a concealed button fly. See that there, we'll see more detail of this when we turn these inside out. And at each side you have side adjusters which use an American style buckle in a chrome finish with a little cloth, uh, little webbing belt there that you can use to adjust in the sides. Interestingly, it passes through a little loop in the center there, which is a difference from the US design, but this is still drawn from the last version of the Tropical Combat Uniform. Angled hip pockets here and here, as you can see. If we turn these side on, you can see the leg pockets here again, which draw quite heavily from the US Tropical Combat Uniform. The pockets are stitched down at the front, but heavily bellowsed at the rear, as you can see. We have a pocket flap with concealed buttons. We again have the single pleat down the center there and you do again have drainage eyelets worked into the design. There's one in this corner here and one just here as well as you can see. If I lift these up here, you can see we do have a channel for a draw cord at the bottom here with two stitched in eyelets to allow a draw cord to be run through there. So the other side is basically a mirror image as you can see with the same design of pocket on the leg. And again, the draw cord in the bottom there. A little bit of damage here, but not too bad. They are a very nice thing to have and quite rare. So as I say, not surprising. These have seen some wear and tear. Looking at the inside of these now, you can see the waist fastening here. We have the button on the front there where the waist crosses over the exposed button at the front. You then have a, a doubled over section of cloth here with another button inside to secure the waist. As you can see, the back of the button fly there. And we have the bags here for the hip pockets. And you can see the stitching there for the external leg pockets as well. If we lift these up, I double them over and lift them up here. You can see that channel around the bottom here for the draw cord. If I can find this one actually has a draw cord in, an elastic draw cord in it that's been uh, tied off here and here. So you can see that a little bit more clearly on that side. Looking at the rear here, you can see the label and we'll get a close up of this now. Looking at the top here, you can see at the top there the marking AGCF Victoria. And beneath that 1982 the date of manufacture of course as we saw before and beneath that the broad arrow and the sizing the size 80s the brook trousering there and army number and name a space for the army number and name to be written in beneath that so hopefully you found it interesting at looking at this as i say this is the 1982 trials version of the uniform it wouldn't be until the late 1980s that you would see dpcu issued more widely to australian forces of course and it would become standard issue it did differ somewhat from this, and that's perhaps the topic for a, a future video. But it's interesting to look at this trials version, which obviously draws very heavily on the US tropical combat uniform. It's unsurprising, really, given Australia's experience with that uniform in Vietnam in a, a limited capacity. Certainly the SAS made extensive use of it in camouflage, in the ERDL camouflage material. And uh, it was acquired in certain instances by other Australian troops as well. Uh, in various ways, I'm sure. It does turn up very occasionally in photographs of Australian troops in Vietnam uh, as well, though they did tend to use their own uniform. It's a, a rare exception to see uh, US uh, uniform in use with Australian troops, but there are some examples of it. So obviously drawing on that experience with the tropical combat uniform in Vietnam when coming up with this trials version of the design. I do hope you found it interesting looking at this. If you have, and you'd like to see more from the channel, Please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated as they always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch, but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.